Hello everybody, I'm Gwen Campbell Mendes. Welcome to Gwen's Bookish Ramblings. Okay, so we're starting another temporally complicated uh, bit of the Valdemar series of books. You see, By the Sword, which I will start off today talking about, actually takes place during the course of uh, basically six of the books in the series, because there is Exiles Honor and Exiles Valor, um, followed by Take a Thief, and then that is followed by the trilogy that started the whole Valdemar series properly, uh, which is the Arrows trilogy. And the thing about By the Sword is that we know, because at the end of By the Sword, or near the end of By the Sword, uh, we're informed that uh, Carowin is about the same age as Queen Selene. And Exile's Valor, or rather Exile's Honor, takes place with Selene in her late teens, early twenties. By the Sword, with Carowin, who is approximately the same age as Selene, starts with Carowin at about age 17. Carowin, her story, therefore, is taking place simultaneously with, uh, with Exile's Honor and Exile's Valor. And interestingly enough, however, the last third of By the Sword, the third part of it, takes place after the Arrows trilogy and before the Mage Winds trilogy. So, in effect, By the Sword runs from just before Exile's Honor, through all of those books, and follows on after Arrows of the Queen and uh, Arrows Flight and Arrows Fall. So because this book is going on through all of this, what I've chosen to do, in effect, is I have chosen to do the first third of By the Sword, which is entitled Carowin's Ride. Then I will talk about Exile's Honor in the second part of this video, um, which hopefully I'll get to soon enough to talk about it some. Then I'll do Exile's Valor, which will probably have some extra bits about Exile's Honor as it spills over. And Take a Thief. Then I'll talk about the middle part of By the Sword, um, which is entitled Two-Edged Blade. And then I'll do Arrows, which I will follow after by The Price of Command, which is book three, which, as I said, picks up after the Arrows trilogy. So, now that I've wasted three and a half minutes telling you all about what I'm going to do, especially because if you read the comments that I get, I've actually posted that in a comment in response to somebody else who was asking whether I would do Carowin's Ride. Um, I would mention the name, but honestly, I didn't take notes, and now I've started this, and I'll put that in the comments below when I get there. Anyways, Carowin's Ride, book one. So, Carowin is the granddaughter of Tarma and Kethri. You may remember them uh, from the Vows and Honor trilogy of books, which are also temporally complicated. So I suppose it's thematically consistent that Carowin's book would also be temporally complicated. Um, we have here Carowin on the cover. She's the blonde. And behind her is the man she turns out to be life-bonded with, Elden, and his companion, but uh, we're not going to be talking about them because they don't come up until the second section of the book. So, um, just pretend he's not there, as well as his horsey. So, Carowin is the granddaughter of Tarma, of Kethry, rather. Um, and the thing is that her mother was the black sheep of Kethry's flock of children. That is, she was the one who wanted a strong husband, and who wanted to just be a wife and mother, and who didn't want to make something of herself, and was 
hor just horrendously conventional. And it's kind of the precise inverse of all of those stories that we read about, you know, the person about the woman who wants to be a warrior and everyone tells her she should be a wife and mother. Well, uh, Carowin's mother was in a family of people who want their children to go forth and do things, and she wants to be a stay-at-home mother. Um, anyways, after much work, Kethry manages to, you know, effectively get her married off and everything, but the man that uh, Lenore is married off to... It doesn't really like the fact of how much he owes to a sorceress, doesn't like the fact that the sorceress is, he feels magic is damn dirty pool, he doesn't like Tarma because she's a creepy, eerie woman warrior from the barbarian Shinayan, and, you know, all of those kinds of prejudices. And he basically has demanded that Tarma and Kethry never, never set foot on their lands. So... <clears throat> When, Keth when Carowin's older brother winds up, is getting married, and they're attacked, Carowin is basically the only person left who is fit to ride for help. And so she goes and she rides for help. And the person, people that she rides to are her grandmother and Tarma. And this starts her on an unexpected path because after the rescue happens she gets to she uh, gets taken on as a student of her grandmother and Tarma more specifically of Tarma because Caro is gifted at swordplay she is gifted and talented and it's something that is who she is and speaks to her and she is a warrior at heart, and and this is this first section is the story of her finding her path and finding her way. Her first teenage romance, which fizzles out because most teenage romances do in real life, and it's a wonderful introduction to how she becomes the woman that we see at the start of the Mage Winds trilogy, and it sets up a backstory, and it tells us sort of the final chapter of Tarma and Kethry's life, and it gives us a certain amount of closure there, too. So, simultaneous with that, let's move on to the next book, Exile's Honor. And Exile's Honor... And I'll I'll talk more about By the Sword later, um, after Arrows. Exile's Honor is the story of Alberic. And Alberic is... He's the weapons master when you read uh, Arrows, Arrows of the Queen, Arrows Flight, Arrows Fall. When you read that book... Um, and by the way, uh, you can see this is the one that I purchased for 25% off... Um, and then an extra 10% off, and then uh, by the time I got to it, I got this, which is, by the way, a hardcover book, for uh, $3.25, brand new. So, ha. So let's just take a look at the picture that's on the cover without the uh, extra stuff there. So there you go. There's Alberic. Um, the thing about Alberic is... Uh, and this isn't the greatest picture of him, I'll be honest with you, because he's supposed to have a horrifically scarred face that just, like, ruins everything, and that's really not. He's just kind of got a scar above his eyebrow, but whatever. Um, Alberic's story is that he's from the traditional enemies of uh, Valdemar Kars, which, if you're reading the series in chronological order, you know, and you in fact know far better uh, then if you started with Arrows of the Queen. The thing about the Arrows trilogy is we first meet him, if you're reading the book in or books in order of publication, we first meet him there. And he's a character with a mysterious backstory because he is from the enemy nation of Kars. And yet he's a herald. He's been chosen. He can't be a bad person because he's been chosen. And this... 
this originally, this story was originally just a single short story. Um, something, something silver. But Mercedes Lackey chose to expand this into a novel and then a sequel. And this novel, like I said, is taking place simultaneously with Carowin, age 17. Alberic, it has foresight, and when his foresight strikes him, he's a reasonably decently like, captain commander type person in the Carsite army. And when his foresight strikes him, Kars, which doesn't like people who have mind magic gifts, they basically try to burn him alive, at which point he is rescued by the companion who later chooses him and is taken to Valdemar. And it's called Exile's Honor because the whole story is about Alberic wrestling with the fact that he swore vows and believes very strongly in honor, but he swore these vows to care for and protect the people of Kars, and yet here he is living in Valdemar and fighting a war in a country that is fighting a war against Kars. And it puts him in a very unfortunate bind because he is, on the one hand, on the side against his home nation, on the side against these people who he swore to protect, and at the same time, he cannot go back and he can't work on behalf of the Karsite government because they are corrupt, because they are run by a corrupt priesthood, because all of these things there that they believe in, that they've been following, that they've been trusting, that they've been doing, all these things are morally, ethically wrong. And he's caught in an honor-related catch-22. He's an exile. He is in exile. He cannot go home. He has not only been forced to leave by virtue of the fact that they will burn him to death if he goes back, but because he has been chosen by the people of this other nation to be one of the, to be a Valdemeran herald, which after all is a combination of, you know, law enforcement and judge and uh you know, part of the armed forces and a whole bunch of other things. And so the core of this book is Albert struggling with this inner conflict. And it's an inner conflict that he admits he should have had sooner because when he was in Kars, he should have been paying more attention to things like honor, but he had allowed himself to sort of sink backwards into a certain amount of apathy just just to deal with to deal with the terrible things he was asked to do to deal with turning a blind eye on certain problematic issues which was however a matter of survival it's one of those complicated problems of good people in situations where the do they do the best they can but within limits because they also don't want to you know become martyrs because Sometimes a martyr is a good thing, but sometimes martyring yourself just means you've left a whole bunch of people in the lurch by doing so. And so, Exile's Honor is an interesting book about a person's internal struggle with complicated ethical issues. Because the issues that he struggles with, the issue of honor, it's an issue of ethics rather than morals. Things can be objectively right and wrong, and yet when you have a system of rules that you say you follow, uh, those can sometimes conflict with morals, and Alberic is in that situation. And so this first book really follows that development, him reaching a peace with himself about these issues and about his switching sides and about how he's not really switching sides and gives us a whole bunch of background on a mysterious character that we didn't know all that much about. Um, in the same way, By the Sword also gives us some background on a character who kind of lunges out of nowhere after the Arrows trilogy. Um, and that's about everything, so... I will see you all with Exiles Valor next week.